if we can finish this story with the events mentioned in the previous chapter, that would be great. Some of the people may be anticipating it that way. But it is impossible. We have further to tell of the terrible event which took place on the same day and at about the same time in the mansion of the Sambuvarayar of Kadampur. Nandini was walking around alone in her room. Her facial expression showed the excitement that resided in her heart. A strange light flashed in her eye and then disappeared. She often looked at the many ways to get into the room. Her ears were keenly alert for any footsteps in those ways. The hour is at hand. Her lips were often murmuring. Sometimes her lips twitched as she murmured like that. And sometimes her eyelids and eyebrows twitched. Each time her whole body throbbed like a madman's throbbing. Curtains hung on all four sides of the puncha mattress spread bed where Nandini slept. They were completely covering the bed. Nandini slowly lifted a side curtain. She looked at the killing sword lying on the bed and it glittered like a sword made by the glowing fire of a blacksmith's furnace. He was surprised that the mattress, bed and curtains were not burnt by the fire. Just by thinking about this, he had to know that it was not a sword made of hemp, but a sword made of iron. Nandini took the sword in her hand. She picked it up. She made it sparkle even better in the light of the lamp and came out. Then she hugged it to her chest and kissed it. She also used the sword. God! The time is at hand for you to do your work. You will not forsake me, will you? No, you will not forsake me. Only my hands will forsake me. She said. Then, looking at his hands, he said, Hands. Will you be sure? Chi Chi. You're trembling like this now? What will you do when the time comes? Yes. Yes. It's no use trusting you. I've got two other hands to earn today. She said. Suddenly Nandi's whole body shivered once. She looked up with burning eyes. Aha! Uh -huh. Have you come? Come. Come. You have come just in time. My love. My king. Come. Valiant Pandian head. Why are you on the edge of the roof? Come down. There is no one here. No one but your servant. Why are you watching so awake? Open your mouth and say a word. You said that if you escaped to this continent and survived, I would put you on the throne of Pandya. I have not forgotten that. I have not forgotten my promise to you. The time to remember it is near. How long have I waited patiently for that? What disguises have I put on? All you you have been watching. Now watch. Watch without burning your eyes. You're the only one who can't get it. You are making me unable to close my eyes and sleep. If I take revenge on you tonight, you'll let me sleep later, won't you? Won't you? Will you go only after seeing me sit on the Pandya throne? If I keep mine, you say you'll keep yours. No, no. I don't want a throne. I don't want a crown of bells. Someone brought a boy called your son. He was enthroned and crowned with bells. If I have repaid you, you will be satisfied with that. At least you will leave me later. Where all those who died in the war go to the heroic paradise, you will also go to that heroic paradise. There are so many girls like me out there. One of them, what? You say you won't. Well, okay. Let's talk about that later. My dear. Looks like someone is coming. You disappear, I also hide this sword of revenge. Just then, footsteps were heard near the doorstep. While Nandini was keeping the sword on the bed, Manamegali came in. Nandini, who was moaning hysterically a moment ago, was completely transformed in a moment, is that you, Manamegali? Come on. She said. Her voice was calm. Sister. What's this? You're always sword in hand. Said Manamekali. Then, what shall we do? If the boys are so foolish, shall we resort to the sword? Goddess. Do I have a partner? Don't you trust me? I told you all my secrets without trusting you, 
Manamekalai. You are the only person I trust in this world. Yet, can't you do anything against your own brother? Sister. I've decided that I don't even have a biological brother. Why do you say that? He's your brother anyway. Brother or sister? I have come to know that all that relationship is just an illusion. Kanamaran is trying to force me against my will, for his own convenience, if there was true brotherly affection, would he do this? Sister. He may wish to marry you to the prince for your own good. Yes, he knows my good and my bad. Indeed, he does not consider my good at all, sister. Is it not for your good that your lord wishes that you should sit on the throne of the vast Chola kingdom from Elam to North Pena? Not at all. If I am the queen of Tanjavur, it is because I want him to become the first minister or to become an autocrat like the great Palyavatarayar. Sister. Sister. Manamegala hesitated to say that. Say, Manamekalai. Feel free to say whatever is on your mind. Everything you said about your love for me is true. Sister. Do not doubt it. There are only two people I love in this world. One is us. Who else? Your mind knows that. Why are you asking me? Brother. I thought you would be happy with it. Haven't you heard the stories and epics? Isn't it natural for a girl to want to talk about it when love arises in her heart? Why is a close friend? That's true, sister. I've let them know my privates, too. But now I've come in haste to tell them something else. A very troubling news, sister. Nandini was startled, what? What? She asked. She was afraid that something would get in the way of what she had been planning for a long time. A sign of it appeared on her face as well. Sister. Thanatakari Palyavatarayar has not yet reached Tanjavur. On the way. What happened on the way? Maybe he changed his mind and turned back. Nandini's question did not diminish her panic. It would have been better if he had returned, sister. Wasn't there a storm that day when we were on the lake island? That storm hit very hard at the castle and beyond. The storm was strong when Pula Vetarayar went in the boat to the castle. Then asked Nandini excitedly. However, the tone of concern was somewhat subdued. The boat has capsized while reaching Acre. Oh! Those who got ashore searched everywhere for spoils. Only their husbands were not caught. Said Manamekalai. Nandini expected Manamegal to cry Vimy on hearing this news and was ready to console her. But Nandini did nothing of the sort. How did you know this news? He asked in a tone of disbelief, not at all flustered. She said. One of the men who went with the herdsman has returned. He was telling my Tamayan. I heard it with my own ears, sister. My Tamayan was hesitating how to convey this news to them and was asking the prince for advice. I ran to tell them somehow. Saying this, Manamegali could not bear her grief and began to wonder. Nandini hugged her and said, My dear. I know how much you love me. But don't be sad. She said. Manamegali looked up at Nandini with a little surprise. How big is her chest? Nandini knew the thought that appeared in her mind. Sister. You ran to console me with sad news. But I have to tell you. Don't be sad. My husband's life was certainly not in danger. My heart would have told me if something like that had happened. That's why I'm not worried. But tell me in more detail what you heard. Another doubt has arisen in my mind. What do you doubt, sister? I think that your brother-in-law and that Pallava Parthipendra are planning to do some harm to my husband. Couldn't they have prepared a message of this kind before that? I don't understand, sister. Why should they harm the reaper? You are still a green child, Manamekalai. Didn't I tell you that your Tamayan and Parthipendra have a grudge against me? Didn't you tell me that's why I keep this sword close at hand all the time? You have said, therefore I have asked you not to call Kantham around my Tamayan anymore. I will no longer regard that Badagan as my CO born. 
but why should they harm the Pavatere? Sister! Can't you know this too? I, who am distressed by marrying an old man, will be happy in my heart if he goes away. Then I will also agree to their evil intentions. If I had known that your Damayan was like this, I would not have kept him in my house and treated him like a brother. I would not have saved him who went to the door of Yamalokam. Sister! I will not be separated from you for a moment. If either of those two come here, I will kill them with my own hands. Manamekali? You don't need that worry. I will save myself. If Kanamaran and Parthapendra come near me, I will teach them wisdom so that they will never forget. I have no fear of them. I was only a little afraid of the rogue prince. Fortunately, you saved me from that danger. Did I save them? How so? Don't you know, Manamekali, that you have captured the heart of the prince? What is the reason why he took the monkey warrior by the hand and pushed him away and saved you from the lake water? Even after that I have been taking care of him. Don't you know that, Manamegali? I don't know what? It's known. Just thinking about the prince scares me. My body trembles when he comes near. There is a lover who calls himself my Tamayan, isn't there? He is consuming my soul without rest. You want to marry the prince? Yes, just look at me alone for a moment, and immediately he begins to preach to me. Just for his trouble. Have you decided to marry the prince for his trouble? You say that too. Vimy started crying for hours. Tears welled up in her eyes. Nandini reassures her. I told you for some game. Why did you start crying like this? She said and wiped her tears. When Manamegala calmed down a little, she said, My dear. Examine your mind and answer. Do you really not love Prince Kari Kaler? Don't you wish to marry him and become the crown prince of the Chola Empire? Said Nandini. Whether I ask it once or a hundred times, my answer is the same. Sister. I never have that desire. Is it true that you have given your mind to Vandiyathevar of the Monkey Clan? Yes, sister. But what is his mind like? What if his mind is like that? If he's alive, shouldn't he ask about his mind? What are you talking about, sister, startled Manamegal. She said. I know how to save myself. I have saved myself in many more dire situations than this. Really all I care about right now is you. Does this girl love us so much? Does she want anything to happen? I worry about that. I was thinking about you even when you came into this room. You don't understand what you're saying, sister. What's the danger for me? Woman. What could be more dangerous to women than to live for an unwanted husband? It's a day-to-day -day practice. Your uncle has decided to marry you to the prince, your father has consented. What will their resolution and consent do to me? If only I consent. You speak like a child. Is it possible in the world that a minor prince marries women of the clan only after seeking the women's consent? Moreover, if the eldest son of the emperor who rules the three worlds, the crown prince, wants to marry you, who can forbid it? Why? I can. I will tell the prince directly. What do you say? I'll say I don't want to marry him. If you ask the reason. I will tell you the real reason. I will tell you that my mind is engaged with his friend Valaveriar. Ghost girl. Don't even say this. They already know. Why are they forcing me if they know? If they force me too much, here I am with a knife, sister. Saying this. She showed Manamegala a small knife tucked into her waist. My dear sister. Seeing your ignorance makes me weep on the one hand and laugh on the other. What did I say, sister? You thought someone was going to force you. You thought they were going to ask for your consent. They're not going to do anything like that. They're going to remove the reason why you can't marry the prince. What are you saying? I tell you that to whom you have given your heart, his life is in imminent danger. Ouch! 
Your Damayan already has a grudge against his old friend. He is angry that he told the prince about the conspiracy held by the princes a few months ago in this palace. He is also accusing him of trying to kill him by stabbing him in the back. For another reason, Parthipendra is also very angry with your lover. What will their anger do to him? Sister. Is he not a pure warrior? What if there was a pure hero? What could a pure hero do without a weapon in the midst of so many assassins who suddenly surrounded him? Oh! You mean they'll kill him? They will not kill. They will cut them to pieces and give them to foxes and dogs. Oh! How cruel! Are you too harsh to ask? What would you suffer if you actually walked away? Sister! My heart and soul are beating now. Will they really do that? He is the prince's best friend. Haven't you heard of close friends becoming mortal enemies, sister? Your cousin and Parthipendra have incensed the prince like that. The negotiators. All this for you. You are asking how I knew? Parthipendra came to say goodbye to me during the day with the excuse that he was leaving. Where's that bastard going? Not far. You have heard that the old Malayan of Thirukovalarg is coming towards this town with a large army. Asked and wondered what it was for. And it is for your sake. Today at noon the prince announced about it. If you do not marry Manamila to me, I am going to raise this fort and palace to the ground as soon as Malaya Monsanyam arrives. He said. That's when your Damayan said, it is not us who are blocking it, it is your friend Vandiyadeva. Can't you remove that block, asked the prince. If you give orders, said your brother. My dear sister. I spoke further with Parthibendra and learned some details. It is certain that the life of your lover is in imminent danger. If you do not make an effort at once, you will lose your husband before marriage. Said Nandini. Wasn't it surprising that Manamekali's body and soul throbbed after hearing this? Oh. He must be warned at once somehow. She said stumbling. Nandini said, we can warn you, but you yourself said that your lover is a pure hero? Will you run away in fear hearing that his life is in danger? He won't. He will be more stubborn, said Nandini. You have to think about it. My head is spinning. I don't know what to do, said Manamekali. That's what I was thinking when you came here. I didn't understand either. Fortunately, you brought a message. From that, an idea arose to save the mighty. From the news I brought? What news was that? Didn't you say that the sailor's boat capsized and there was no news of him afterwards? Yes. I beseech Van Diathavar. I pray that he will go and find out the truth about my husband for me. You also intercede for me. The soldier will not ignore the pleas of the two ghostly women. The only way to save his life is to send him out of this place immediately. There is no other way. He after you leave, you can speak your mind boldly to your mother, father and prince. I will also speak for you. I say, forcing an unwilling woman is not a beauty for those born in the Chola clan. If they don't listen to themselves, I have a knife in my hand. Okay, okay. Now let's try to get your lover out first. You know where he is, don't you? If you can't see him in person, send your friend Chandramati. If not, send Itumbangkari and somehow bring him here. Even if he agrees to go, how will he get out of here, sister? If my brother stops him. Why does your brother want to know, Manamekali, if he came into this room and startled you in the first place? He's going to send you down that tunnel. Go quickly, brother. Every minute Vandiyathevar stays in this fort, his life will be in danger. When will your Damayan and murderers attack him? What do we know about that? I'm going, sister. I'll bring him back somehow, she said, leaving Manamegala. As her footsteps died away, she heard someone knocking on the secret door of the hunting hall next door. Nandini went near the secret door and opened its inner door. A grotesque face was faintly visible in the darkness. Wizard! Are you here? 
said Nandini. I have come, Rani. The time has come, said Ravidasan. <laughs>